We need energy. Electricity is the lifeblood of everything we do. Where would we be without the ability to charge our mobile phones? Heaven forbid. But the demand for energy in the UK is changing. We need to understand how and why. Although there's more demand in the UK, there's more people and there's more things that use electricity, the fewer industries and better conservations actually lowered consumption. Lower energy appliances, fuel efficiency in our cars, better insulation in homes and more solar panels on roofs have changed things for us in the UK. Industrial energy use is down around 60% and domestic use is down around 12%. Our energy mix has changed too. Let's see how. We're no longer self-sufficient in energy. Most of our oil and gas reserves have been used up and we're importing more and more energy. This will affect our energy security as we'll be reliant upon other nations. The reliance on coal has disappeared due to a combination of exhausted coal seams and concerns over greenhouse gas emissions. The discovery of North Sea oil was a tremendous benefit economically for the country, but this has been in decline since the year 2000. This has led to more reliance from overseas supplies. We've improved our generation of renewables substantially, with the renewable share of total energy production rising steadily each year. Sectors such as wind, both on and offshore, along with bioenergy, have been developed around the country. But fossil fuels will remain important in the near future. Although all coal power stations are set to close by 2025, imported coal is still cheap at the moment. One area the UK could really develop is fracking, but that's not without its controversy. The UK has rich reserves of natural gas trapped underground. To get to them, high-pressured liquids, including water, sand and some unpleasant chemicals, are introduced into the shale. This fractures the shale and releases the gas. But there is a possibility of earthquakes, polluted underground water sources, and the costs can be very high. It's useful to be able to compare different types of energy production. So let's look at nuclear energy and wind energy. Let's see the impacts that these two have. Economically, nuclear power plants are very expensive to build. The proposed new Hinkley Point power plant could cost around £18 billion, with funding coming in from China. There's also high cost for producing the electricity. At the end of its life, decommissioning the old nuclear power plant can be expensive. But construction of the new power plants provides great job opportunities and boosts the local economy. The economic impacts of wind farms include the high initial construction costs. They may have negative impacts on the local economy by reducing some visitor numbers, but some wind farms even attract visitors by becoming tourist attractions. At Delabole Wind Farm in Cornwall, which was the UK's first commercial wind farm, local homeowners benefit from the lower energy bills. The wind farm also set up a community fund for them. Looking at the environmental impacts for nuclear power stations, the safe processing and storage of the highly toxic and radioactive waste can be a really big problem. They produce warm water which can harm local ecosystems and there's always the risk of harmful radioactive leaks. Whereas the environmental impact from wind energy includes the fact that some people find them visually impacting on the landscape. In the Lake District concerns about falling visitor numbers have resulted in several plans being rejected. Wind farms though do avoid harmful gas emissions and help reduce the carbon footprint although some people do still complain about the noise from the turbines. Overall, there are tremendous challenges faced in the UK in order to maintain the supply of energy for our day-to-day -day needs. But we also have great opportunities to meet these challenges through the development of new technologies.